welcome back to Ashan Breakfast Call. Now we have Adrian Yeo with us. With a, it, it's an exclusive interview, huh? For climate change and development. So a brief introduction about Adrian. He's a climate change and environment community organizer. Currently moving PowerShift Malaysia, and he has also coordinated lots of international conferences like the UN related and global NGOs movements. So now he's take um well he has previously taken on a environment portfolio with the state government and currently on a mission to excite youth, right, Captain Planet? Well, it's not to excite youth, but it's to make it painful enough for for young people to painful? take action. Yeah, it's just if it's not painful, you will not take action. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell tell us about how painful uh, is 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 the earth now? What kind of state is climate change in? Well, the uh, the the planet is gonna be okay. Um, we are not, we're not worried about the planet. The, uh, we are just oh. worried about the humans. Oh. Um, um, when when the planet. Uh, all, all the planet gonna do is just sneeze and and have a flu, and then it's just a small slight fever, and then um, when when the bacteria and like humans are out of the way, then the planet will cure itself. The yeah, the issue is with us humans, and and, and and we are causing we are the bacteria currently uh, terrorizing the planet at the moment. Uh-huh. When I say painful enough, it's it's like now. Um, uh, recent months in in Kuala Lumpur and also uh, some parts of uh, central peninsular Malaysia, we have a going through a quite a long drought period when we are also experiencing rash, water rationing. Uh, this is unprecedented in Malaysia, a tropical country, rain rainforest country with with uh, water rationing. But people are still not angry enough. People are still not banging on the tables and asking, demanding government, "Hey, what are you doing?" Um, so probably we need to have more work and, and get people to be more angry. Hmm. Okay. So okay, anger it, really is that the solution? I thought it, sh- it should be a love. Um, love is overrated. <laughs> oh no. Uh, def- definitely love love is is important um because if you don't have that feeling for something then you will lose it right away um but but um the painful enough it's it's uh naturally people in in, in people in the cities people become more painful when it first touch about cost of living um cost of buying stuff cost of education that got people angry very very Ill- easily but if you talk about environment um even though we have to carry pails of water up our condominiums, even we need we we, we have to we can't shower uh, as long as we want to. We 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 have to rely on um, government trucks to supply us with water. We are still not angry enough. So this really uh, makes me um, sh- uh, still asking the question whether people do care about the environment at all. Hmm. So um, what one of the things that we are doing um, uh, power shift. Um, on, when we talk about climate change, climate change in this part of the world, especially ASEAN, um, we are in this tropical uh, equator uh, belt that we don't see much uh, major changes in in in, in terms mm-hmm. of climate change. Um, we 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 often been blasted with melting of uh, ice caps in the uh, solar arctic um, where polar bears are dying and and penguins are dying Um, we also have uh, pictures and stories about desertification big forest fire in australia and russia but relatively in philippines and malaysia and uh, thailand it is very much a peaceful we don't see that much big changes it's naturally because uh, we are having summer all year round it is the fluctuation of temperature is not that bad but uh, extreme weather conditions is happening around the world as we are mm-hmm. speaking now this is what uh, the March middle of March Right. If you walk around New York, it's the, uh, or, or m- many parts of the northern uh, America, it's still covered with snow. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be we are transitioning into it's winter. Uh, sorry, transitioning into spring. Um, parts of Japan is still covered with snow. So this is this is what what, what we are seeing. It's it's already foretold. It's already in the res- research reports that um, um, summer will be longer and hotter. Winter will be longer and colder. 
So there will be all the transitional spring and autumn will be become shorter. So the extreme ends will become uh, uh, faster and bigger and stronger, just like what we are seeing in um, the Philippines. Um, just not too long ago, uh, Typhoon Haiyan has mm. has wrecked uh, it's the city of Tacloban um, and and the surrounding and killing so many people and mm-hmm. so many livelihoods were lost and uh, this is uh, indirectly uh, because we the scientific community have not been conclusive enough. It has been indirectly caused by the ever warming of the the ocean. The, when 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 climate change happens, um, what we are seeing is that the increase of uh, temperature on the ocean sea surface. What that means is that there will be more evaporations, uh, more rain power or rain uh, uh, strength uh, uh, absorbed in the uh, ocean surface. When 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 this power is being moved across land and when it crash into the Philippines as the first point of contact from from the Pacific Oceans, it bears the full brunt of this increased uh, 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 power. So. Uh, last year we have Typhoon Haiyan, which is the strongest in history of, of Philippines. Just last year, the year before, um, they have also recorded the year. So it's, it's year after year is, is beginning, is, is record breaking every year, probably in, in years to come. Uh, this year, 2014, probably a bigger typhoon will, will crash into, uh, uh, Philippines bigger than Haiyan. We do not know, but, but, but the trend seems to be that way. I have a question though. Sure. Um, it seems like some people mm-hmm. uh, would suggest that maybe this is all natural, which is part of a cycle that happens every few hundred years or whatnot. And maybe the reason why we don't know, we, we would claim that it's the uh, you know, worst ever is because back then there wasn't any scientific uh, recording of all these things happening. So maybe it's just part uh, of a course of nature. Uh, how do you know that it has deviated from uh, a natural cycle? We know because we we we, we dig uh, into carbon carbon dating technology. Right. We 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 have uh, we're able to extract all the uh, uh, planet's temperature uh, back to a few hundred years, a uh, few hundred thousand years ago. So when we extrapolate the uh, the data, it's, it's it's quite constant. It's it's not it's not uh, too too far apart to to right to the right of the uh, the temperature what we are seeing today it's it's a record breaking even with all this data historical data mm-hmm. planned out together mm-hmm. um the earth temperature has not been so hot before uh, it has been the hottest mm-hmm. year in the last okay. 10 years in 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 the northern america and also what we're seeing is also record breaking year in in australia um, we are seeing summers being uh, uh, warmer and warmer and longer and longer at, year by year. Mm-hmm. Um, if just you just if in Malaysia, we just ask any community um, back then, um, when do we usually get floods or when do we usually get droughts? There will be we will be hearing stories like oh this this we have drought like um, uh, once every forty years or big floods every thirty years. But big floods are happening like almost every other year now. So that is the worrying trend that we are seeing. But this trend is not something new. This trend has been told to us in all this uh, research report 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and, and all this are coming through. I'm just like holding that report and taking one by one. Okay, this had happened. This has happened. This has happened. And, and earlier than, than it was much predicted actually. Mm-hmm. But um, how many years of data was po- uh, was known to us? You mentioned that they actually digged into some. Well, the, the, what 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 they do is that they dig into uh, ice caps. Ice caps. Uh, they dig into um, um, reg- ice caps. Then they they take out the uh, because when we have ice caps inside, they have uh, little tiny bubbles of air, right? Which which they can measure the carbon uh, uh, content of the atmosphere at that time. Oh. So with with, with that with that uh, data, they 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 do their calculations and they can measure what are the content of the uh, gases in the atmosphere and and that that will predict what's the temperature okay. average temperature around. Of course, you can also um they, are, they have also technology people, uh, research to dig into trees and also uh, uh, um, uh, fossils uh, and they they did uh, use the carbon dating how how how. What's the condition of the atmosphere? What's the con- what are the gases around in the area? Then they can then they can tell us what's the temperature and all about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are talking about possibly even data of uh, a few million years, maybe. 
if, if that's uh, I, I may not say a few million, but a few hundred thousand would, would, be, a, thousand. would be a con, con, uh, conservative okay. range. Yeah. Cool. So, so and I and I know that it has been pretty cold in certain areas as well. Well, we have we, it, have we have been through ice age and we have been through um, um, uh, warm warm cycles, but we have not been through such a uh, warm uh, the temperature in, in the atmosphere ever in, in the but history of what Earth. I read earlier this year was also that certain places has an unprecedented winter uh, like being really cold as well is which is which is exactly which is exactly what's uh, what's happening to the planet at, at this point in time right. um, which is all effects uh, effects of climate change um, what, what's gonna, what's happening is that we're gonna have uh, like what, what I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a stronger, colder winter. Mm-hmm. It's going to be more desertification. Mm-hmm. Storms and typhoons and hurricanes will be stronger. Mm-hmm. Summer summer days will be hotter, longer as well. So all these are extremes ends. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, take for example, usually we will have um, rains in Malaysia. Usually we will have like... Uh, I take for example, I'm pulling the data, I'm uh, pulling the numbers from the air. Probably we'll have like 300 millimeters of rain in, like, say, a whole span of one year of 365 days. Mm-hmm. But when all this extreme weather comes in, we may have 100 millimeters of rain in just one day, and the rest of the year no rain, and then another day, another hundred of millimeters. So these are extreme ends. You used to have like probably rain 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 20 millimeters. So so it, it, it used to be spread out evenly and then cools down and, and uh, the, the nature regulates itself. But because of climate change and, and the in, uh, and, and continually increase of the average of the world temperature, the world uh, uh, is, is, is losing its capability of uh, uh, regulating itself and uh, all this um, um, uh, um, extreme weather conditions that we are seeing. Just like uh, uh, recently when we are very popular in the, uh, the North American news is the, what we have, the uh, solar vortex or, or, or the, the, the winter vortex that, that's, that's sweeping across Canada and, and America right. where they have extreme snows, mm-hmm. uh, even in Texas, uh, I heard. So these are, of, of course, the, the earth, uh, the, the planets, the natural mechanism of how to cool itself down. I, I will not bore you down with all the mechanics, but, but yes, this, uh, this, this just be prepared for, for more of these things gonna come, gonna come in the future. If we don't do something, it's gonna continue to worsen. No, if, if we were to do everything now, if we were to stop all the cars, if we were to stop all the factories, if we were right. to stop all the coal fire plants, it's still gonna happen because, um, this is what, what the reality is. The every carbon dioxide that we release today, it will linger in the atmosphere for another twenty years. Mm. So the effect will be uh, compounded in the atmosphere for the next twenty years. So um, we can stabilize it, but we it, it depends on what our action today to bring it down in the next in in the future in in ten years or twenty years to come. Right. So, what are the global community doing? You know, you, I, I, I saw that you were at Al Gore's climate reality conference, and then you were also involved in Power Shift, which is a global movement. Uh, like, what kind of a uh, vision or strategy do you have to, 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 to I don't know um, if the plan is to reverse this or to plan is to stop this. And how do you do this? Well, well, I, I can't speak for the world community. Uh, well, I, what I can share with the listeners is my own, uh, uh, we, my, my own will and and my experience. Um, I, I started my journey in, in, in advocating against climate change uh, when I have the opportunity to join uh, the UN conference, uh, the UN Climate Change Conference, the UNFCCC, uh, famously known as the COP15 in, in Copenhagen, Denmark. Mm. Uh, that was uh, that was touted as the most important, the biggest, the, the, the attended by the world's most leaders. Our dear Prime Minister Najib was there. Mm-hmm. Barack Obama was there, uh, and 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 all these world leaders were there, and and we we, we the the youth community the around the world managed to get about two thousand young people to attend the conference itself. But my experience is not very good. My experience was that hey, um, um, yes, we are there to advocate and then try to engage with our negotiators, we engage with our governments in in the UN level. But the reality is most of this decision. Um, 
I have to come back on the uh, on ground. On ground means uh, back home, where your state governments, where your uh, federal governments, where your local governments have already the implementation and and the decision making back home is more important. So, um, I've I, after this UN uh, conferences, I've I've moved uh, to getting myself trained up, getting myself engaged in more um, uh, engaging with local young community leaders, how to engage with them, how to train them up, how to scale them up. And comes uh, this global power shift. Global power shift is a movement um, uh, uh, sponsored last year by the 350 movement, 350.org. Um, they gathered uh, 200 young people around the world bring them in Istanbul and have us all train up to engage, to run our own power shift in our own country. What is power shift? Power shift has, has literally two meaning. Um, the first power shift means it's shifting from dirty coal fossil fuel energy to clean renewable um, energy like solar and wind. So it is power shifting from dirty mm. to clean. The other power shifting is shifting from all corrupted centralized government's power to decimated uh, uh, decentralized people power youth movement's power that is the power shift as well so there, there's two literally two meanings of this power shift that's why it's so important yeah. how do you plan to do that? well in, in, in Malaysia um, and last December in 2013 uh, Power Shift Malaysia uh, was, was run um, in, in Power Shift Malaysia we have four main tracks uh, we have uh, creative activism we have uh, digital campaigning we have uh, policies, and we also we have media engagement. So all this you can you can based on the uh, focus and tracks uh, that we are really uh, focusing on how to get current on ground activists or, or climate campaigners to scale up to 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 make their campaign to become better, to become more effective, to uh, to have a further, farther reach and have a more powerful voice. So this is not just happening in Malaysia. In Malaysia, uh, uh, December, we have 50 participants. We have speakers from both the governments, the NGOs, and also uh, non-related NGOs, like we have uh, 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 friends from the policy group and also friends from the uh, drama classes to, talk, to, to share with us on the uh, uh, storytelling uh, courses. Mm-hmm. Um, what I can share with the ASEAN community is uh, very excitingly um, this weekend mm-hmm. this weekend which is on the 20th to 23rd of March um, 3, 350 Indonesia uh, is, is hosting Switch Camp um, Switch Camp is their local version local name for uh, Indonesian Power Shift so it's, it's going to happen in Jogja their, 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 their module will be including activism creative resourcing, media and communication, and non-violence direct action. So um, uh, what I last heard from them is they have already uh, secured about uh, 200, uh, 100 participants in, in, in this weekend's uh, power shift in Indonesia. The following weekend, uh, also very exciting, in 350 Philippines, um, 350 Filipinas is uh, hosting power shift in Cebu, Cebu City in 26th to 29th of March 2014 and and with a very similar module as well. So, um, this global community uh, self-organizing movement is not just centralized in one country or one region. It's happening and spreading fast like wildfires like, like hmm. how, how we like it in, in different parts of the world so if you're interested to join all these camps uh, or training in Indonesia and in the Philippines it's not too late you can still log on to their Facebook search them on Google and, and try to sign up yeah so the strategy is to to train up local activists and campaigners and then uh, that, that, that's the that's the objective that's the goal uh, the the strategy would be to try to engage with um, uh, local young leaders with local issues right. for example um, but the participants from our, our previous power shift is now engaging uh, with the uh, uh, with various po- uh, campaigns in, in, in Kuala Lumpur itself. Uh, one of this is uh, some of our participants and volunteers are 
uh, part of the campaign of uh, Save Wangsa Maju Ten Forest, which the, the little plot of forest left in Wangsa Maju is being uh, threatened now with a new high-rise development uh, condominium. So uh, the, the party, the, our, our uh, alumni, participants are using the new found skill sets to, to use and to apply how to engage with all the, the, the developer and also the government. Mm. So, also very, very interestingly, uh, up and coming uh, would be um, there's this proposal to have a new highway cutting across the uh, Selangor State Park in, in, in Selangor uh, from Sungai Long, uh, going to Hululangat, Ampang, Cheras and coming up in UK Pedana. So, it's, it's a, a huge uh, a, a, a space of about... 900 football fields are, uh, will be uh, cut down of the forest uh, for this new highway. So um, some of our participants previously also is trying to help out with the campaign, trying to do some uh, uh, creative uh, activism and how we can engage with the government and the uh, so-called proposal to stop this highway from happening. But I think at the heart of all this environmental issue, it is always the the, the question between development and uh, environment because it seems like you, like like you mentioned highways and then you and, and then a lot of other things uh, that you are cutting away trees and whatnot for. So perhaps is that the main cause behind all that and uh, development? Well, it's um, it only happens in 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 places where um, good governance is lacking. Um, What we are always advocating is good planning, good governance, and and taking account into um, environmental services which the uh, rivers, the forests, the animals are providing. Um, Many of these accounting, many of these calculations are done based on uh, 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 without taking into account of the environmental services that the environment is providing. Take a very simple exa- example. Um, if you were to cut the forest across uh, the Selangor State Park as we know it, um, where would your water source and water catchment area comes from? If you were to remove uh, this part of the forest from this water catchment area, your water catchment uh, area will be, of course, uh, drastically reduced. And how would it affect the uh, uh, input or, or the uh, water resources around the region uh, in this uh, uh, southern southern east of, of uh, Selangor. Um, water will be more expensive, uh, they will be more difficult to come by, um, and, and they have no choice but resulted into investing uh, mega billions projects to bring water from Pahang, as we know it, and in the new tunnel project uh, across mm. the, the Titi Wangsa range. So, can that tunnel be avoided? Of course, if we were to remain our forest intact, we remain our um, water catchment area intact, I'm sure all this unnecessarily um, capital-wasting investment into all this uh, new so-called um, transfer of water from another state is necessary. Mm, I think this is also relevant to probably what the water crisis in Malaysia might be about. I, I don't know, but it seems like at, at, at heart, it's always about perhaps good governance or and corruption. So if you, if I, if I understood it correctly, okay, um, that a lot of uh, non, non, non-revenue water was actually lost in, in our water channels um, that transport water from dams to our house. But uh, but instead of tackling that, we are investing um, billions into building new dams, which probably is not the solution in con- uh, conserving the resources, especially water that is precious. So, uh, what 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 are some good practices that that should happen in in, in the government? Well, but, but, um, or, well, or by all key players. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you ad- 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 mentioned about the uh, non-revenue water and RW in short. It's it's a common it, it's a common industrial term for water which does not reach your your the, the consumer's pipe. Uh, what 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 what's happening is that um, we have reservoirs, water reservoirs uh, upstream of the river where we catch all this water and then store them in the big uh, pail. Uh, what if you call it reservoir and then we pipe it down to a water treatment plant mm. which we need 
there's a cost involved which we need to clean up all the uh, um, um, uh, clean up the water and, and 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 filter the water and then probably add some um, um, fluoride into it and then then release it pump it into houses so the non revenue water that you mentioned is there's um, lots of uh, leakages uh, happen between the water treatment plant to your pipe in your house so in between that the industrial standard worldwide uh, uh, average uh, acceptable non-revenue water is about fifteen to twenty percent, but Malaysia, but but Kuala Lumpur's and Selangor's non-revenue water level is about thirty-four percent, which is so high. Just imagine if you were a, a, every ringgit or every dollar that you spend on your pipe water, thirty percent. Uh, 30% or 30% of that or 30 cents of that is being gone to waste. It's not going to, to treat the water, but it's going to uh, um, go to all these leakages, pipe leakages, old pipes, um, uh, infrastructures. And of course, of course, there's also this big uh, avenue of water theft where people mm-hmm. are, are cutting into the pipes and, and getting water out from, from there. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, uh, what what's happening around, around there. So what this issue is what we are saying is that very poor governance, very poor maintenance. And um, you're right in asking why does the authorities do not uh, or did not uh, focus on, on stopping or, or plugging the plugs. Instead, they are increasing the, 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 the investment onto the upstream and not uh, focusing improving or improving the efficiency of the downstream. It's a very, very valid question. Um, then you must ask, the next question you must ask is, what is the benefit of them putting investment in upstream and not, uh, not on the downstream? So all this, com- uh, of course, corruption and, and poor management in, 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 in the committee, in the management committee of the, uh, of the private c- company, uh, all comes into play. Um, and, and recently, the, the latest progress was the, um, I think the federal government of Malaysia and also the state government of Selangor has, has signed this, uh, MOU to re, t- to take over and, and restructure the whole, um, the management. Uh, let, let's hope that it will, it will come, it will bear some uh, good results in the years to come. But I, I, I'm, I'm still very tough for that. <laughs> So, but how can uh, the ASEAN communities or international community help to make this more successful and what kind of strategies um, can environmentalists employ to be more successful I, I think I think like like the uh, the, the uh, along the um, the spirit of power shift and 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 and, and all this uh, citizen activism is keep asking questions mm-hmm. if, if you see something is not right and and you you when your let's take Malaysia for example uh, when when the companies of our, our water companies and our electric city companies year after year in their annual in their annual uh, meetings they are they are publishing records of profits but they are still increasing their rates because they said they are running to a loss and then then you find out that there are so many leakages um elsewhere uh, in terms of uh, so many things uh, then you should keep on asking questions to your local representative to your mm. um, uh, local governments what are they doing and ask for the accounts and, and accountability to be published as well because we, we should remember that in environment issues what goes back uh, what what goes back what around? goes around comes around oh, yeah, right. definitely. I'm like trying to sing a song <laughs> I can't sing it oh, so bad <laughs> but anyway you were talking about wildfires uh, you know, uh, this movement is being uh, spreading like wildfire is it is it as well as the, the, the fires that's causing the haze is it faster than that tell, tell us the, some stories of what's happening well, de- de- definitely. The, um, uh, well, well, I, I started this morning with uh, telling you guys that I uh, this morning there's smokeless, uh, hazeless in in, in in KLCD. Uh, the the haze has has come to a point where it's so bad that Kuala Lumpur and uh, part of Selangor felt has like been. As it, it felt <laughs> like yeah, you're you're in the midst of Highland Mountain with a yeah. mist early morning, but the mist uh, has a tint of smoke in it. Mm. Um, that is also very much of um, our human intervention onto the environment where our hunger for uh, food um, actually 
pushed all this the agriculture and and poor decision making, uh, opening up lands into peat forests. Um, peat forest is another big matter that uh, very uh, close to heart in in climate change movement. Peat forest is uh, in, in 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 Bahasa. It's we call it the uh, hutan tanah bakau, hutan tanah paya, and and in English is all these mangroves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 in our terms would be peat forest. Peat forest is layers of from one meter to up to three meters of dead wood or or, or a slow decaying uh, carbon compound in in all this uh, waterlogged area. It, it was found in the whole southern part of Sumatra, the Riau region, the whole coast of um, Peninsular Malaysia from Perak all the way to Johor Bahru, and the whole coast of Sarawak all the way from Kuching all the way up to Brunei is all mm. peat forest. So peat is the second biggest carbon storage in the world the first being the ocean the second is uh, the, the peat is because it has so much carbon content in this waterlogged area it's, it is storing so much of carbon once but what's what's happening now is that agriculture is being uh, is being enro- in, in, encroaching into this uh, peat forest and what they're doing is that they're drying up all this waterlogged area it used to be one to two meters high of water level what they do is that they drain all the water leaving exposed all this uh, slow decaying uh, car metal, which is all your logs and leaves and, and, and trucks, which has been there for many, many years, when it used to be big underwater, but it's suddenly being dried up. And of course, once you, and any light, and any fire source, whether it's a cigarette butt or a, a, a tinder from a nearby fire, once it touches all this uh, uh, carbon matter, it would n- wow. ignite very very easily and the problem as as shown by our uh, fire department is that it's very difficult to uh, put off all this fire because this fire is not on the surface this fire is one meter wow. and two meter at the bottom and it's still burning you you don't see the fire on the surface but you're seeing all the smokes coming out smoldering slowly but it's there's a big huge fire at the bottom that is what causing all the haze um asian community um has has come together Way back in early to mid mid two thousands, and they have all this ASEAN haze. Mo- they, we even set up a ASEAN haze monitoring website, which every uh, all our listeners can can look at it. It's ASEAN haze something dot org. So, um, this this have a daily update of where are the burning spots around the region, and and recently the whole ASEAN is in red color. I'm curious, yes. how many percent of all these red spots are caused naturally and how many percent are intentionally? And, and naturally, is it also because of uh, the, 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 the heat, uh, the temperature rising? Or is like a vicious cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, when you have increased weather temperature, when you have increased drought, right. there tend to be increased probability of being caught on fire. Right. Yeah. But if, if, on, on the other hand, if it's on a natural state, which is underwater, right. even though it's dry, it won't go to fire. Okay. So the point is when we drain out the water, we want to venture into plantation, agriculture, we drain out the water, the carbon matter become dried up and it's easily being ignited. That, that Asian map uh, that, that, that was frequently shown, uh, that, 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 that does not tell you how the fire was started. But right. the fire, the, what, what the map shows is that it's big enough to be sensed by the satellite. Right, but majority of them is it intentional human act or? We, there, there's no way to tell that. There's huh. no way to tell that. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps this is something that the Asian communities can look into developing, like well, going that, a step beyond just. Well, that's the thing. My 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 criticism is that last year when the Singapore community, uh, when the Singapore government, uh, the, Sing- the whole Singapore city was being engulfed in haze last year, right, and the the prompt action and the. Uh, Far reach. The Singapore government hosted the haze uh, meetings and called partners in, in 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 Indonesia and Malaysia to come and sit together and have a meeting right away. And uh, this year, uh, we have seen that all the uh, websites uh, of the haze is being updated and 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 with more data, easier to understand. Um, and and something has been done. But Malaysia has been one of the 
full uh, is bearing the full brand of this haze from from our neighboring uh, country in Sumatra, but Malaysian government doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, but this is just Malaysia, Indonesia. But if you look up north, uh, a bit further up, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, um, we can see that every year it's also burning up very big in, in a big way. Um, if, we, if we talk about Sumatra, it's just a small area. Think about the whole Indochina uh, area from from northern Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. It's all in the red spot as well. Mm. But Good to them is uh, lucky to them is that they don't um, because there's a huge wind crossing in the area, so the the haze are being quickly decimated uh, and being spread out. So the, mm. the the smoke or the haze concentration is not that bad, but it's still burning. So it's still very worrying on their side. Mm. So I will go back to one of our um, discussion just mm. now uh, about development versus uh, climate change. Yep. So what? What what should be done if we do need more land for our humans growing population? Are you are you advocating that we should mimic nature like a permaculturist, or maybe an alternative way where things could go hand in hand? Um, I'll just plot an example here. Um, for example, in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur city, we have seen um, how historical. Uh, buildings and heritage buildings are torn down to build like hundred stories mega towers and shopping malls mm, and whatnot. Mm, mm. But uh, what is the way forward that's good for all? Well, well, if, if I can answer you the question, I'll be a multi-billionaire now. Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Mm. We we don't have a one single bullet or one single solution that we can uh, we can we can offer. But um, again, looking at an example in Malaysia, um, let's look at our palm oil industry. Um, palm oil industry in the peninsula Malaysia, we have uh, we have come to a point where uh, we don't have new land, uh, new more uh, any more new agriculture space that the palm oil industry can enc- can can plant encroach. their encroach and plant anymore because they have reached up to the to the range the to, the, the steep to the steep mountainous area. They have gone out. To the, the the seaside of uh, Johor, uh, Mersing, um, and also Selangor, so they've pretty much gone to the maximum uh, available affordable land in in Peninsula Malaysia. So companies or, or planters in in Peninsula Malaysia, they're going uh, a new route, which is instead of increasing the acreage, they are increasing the productivity per acreage. So meaning that if, for example, uh, uh, ten years ago, the the production of oil, palm oil, from one acre. Let's say I, I, I'm, I'm pulling figure from the air again. If they can pull, uh, it can produce like 100 liters of oil in one acre. Probably with, with new R and D, with with better uh, um, with better fertilizers, with with, with prob- probably hopefully uh, a kinder permaculture fertilizer, they can increase to 150 percent of of oil per acreage. So they're increasing the efficiency per acre. Mm. Which is which is what we we hope to happen, but what's happening in Sarawak on the other hand would be, um, they are still rapidly increasing the acreage, so uh, they are in, instead of focusing on increasing the efficiency per acre or, or the production rate from one side, they are they are increasingly the land, so they have gone up to the most mountainous area, now they are what they are doing is that they they are going to the peat forest. They're drying up all the pit forests and th- they're trying to plant the palm palm plantation on their side. So in in so that definitely uh, reduces the efficiency or the production uh, per acre from from all these uh, uh, unnatural sites of uh, oil palm plantation. Hmm. So instead of uh, the chat the the the, the, uh, the like you mentioned the. Uh, Development versus environment. Actually, both can go hand in hand. It's just mm-hmm. you need to make good decisions, good governance, and 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 you must also take into account of the environmental services that were provided. So, along this line of thought of uh, maximizing, let's say, efficiency per whatever land size there is, uh, I'm not sure if you agree with this kind of idea. But uh, some of from the tech communities actually suggested. In Singapore, uh, experiments in vertical farms, you know, <laughs> where you actually build farms, not like uh, 
flatly, but rather in multiple stories building. So in a controlled climate even. So what do you think of all this? Do you think this is the way it's go? Oh, well, but yeah. Why, why not? I mean, um, 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 if they're not using any artificial fertilizers, uh, we are we are all for it. Uh, I think the the vertical farms they are using a lot of uh, small um, cubicle size uh, pl- uh, hydrophonics, aerophonic kind. Uh, of. Uh, they're, they're, they're both. They can they can they can they can grow in uh, small plots of pots. Or or, 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 mm. or cubic of land, right. and then they stack them up. It is possible. Mm. The other version is you can use uh, 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 hydroponics, which is you, you don't use land, you don't use any land or, or soil. You just use water. Then the, you, you you just put in the fertilizers in the water, and and the plants mm. will grow. Um, in in land scars, uh, Singapore, and also many parts of uh, what what you're hearing is Brooklyn, New York. They're also doing yeah. this a lot of uh, urban farming as well, on on rooftops of mm-hmm. of abandoned buildings um, and. And they're, they're doing a lot of this uh, forward because the cost of bringing uh, fresh produce, uh, vegetables and and herbs, or uh, outside of the city and bring them into the city, it costs far more than producing your own on roof, rooftops. Mm-hmm. So we mean, we mean you when you have this opportunity to do it, but uh, of course, of course. But uh, unfortunately, this all these rooftops and urban gardens is uh, still very much on the low low production rate, you are unable to feed the city with it. So you still need a, a commercial big farms uh, to to do the job, to, f- to fill in the gap. Mm. So Adrian, if we could end with uh, a message to all our audience. Are we ending already? Wow. It's time fast. <laughs> oh. You must be having a great time. You don't realize that time's flying. <laughs> oh, there's, so, there's, there's so much to say and, and, and so much, uh, so many messages to tell all, all you guys out there. It's just that... Um, um, the, for the for the environment, uh, what we can uh, I, how, how I begin this 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 show is that the planet is is going to be all right. You know, we are the humans that that's going to be worried about it. Uh, um, if 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 climate change does happen, if the temperature were to rise to forty five degrees Celsius, uh, we may not survive. The plants may not survive. The animals may not survive. But the algae, the undersea water uh, wildlife will survive. Probably a new earth uh, will, will, will come into filtrations after they kicked out all this bacteria we call human beings on, on the planet Earth. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's us that we are saving actually. So keep asking questions to the government. Keep activating yourself. If you need any assistance, just let us know. Tune into during at ASEAN for more interviews like this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and definitely join PowerShift Malaysia. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adrian, for being with us today. Thank you. <laughs> so we hope to see you again tomorrow on ASEAN Breakfast Call. Goodbye and have a nice day.